Hey, it's filming day. I'm in my studio here. We're doing some filming. And uh, what's what am I looking at when I'm filming? What do you think I'm looking at? You know what I get to look at? I get to look at the producer there, Paul Murphy. Hey, Murph. How's it going? <laughs> All right, so I got another couple more questions that came in for Ask Jeff. This first one was a, a coach. This is uh, Kathy. Uh, she's a coach. She says, I'm a sales coach. I have a few tenured representatives. I have one in particular who is a driver personality and feels that he can learn nothing from me. He's a strong performer, but is often on his own program and not necessarily going to follow the sales process we have put in place. How would you coach someone like this? <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough one, Kathy, and we see this happen a lot. You, I'll tell you what you're fighting more than anything else is that you're fighting habit. Uh, salespeople get into habits. This is the way that they want to sell, and they've had success with it, so they look at it and go, why change? And that's a really legitimate question, why change? And that's your job as a sales coach is to show them why it is in their best interest to change. But my recommendation to you is not to try to change the entirety of their sales presentation. I mean, let's face it, if they've been, been producing over a long period of time, clearly they're doing something that works. So I want to suggest that you're just uh, working on one aspect of their sales presentation. Just pick something that you know would make a significant difference, but it's just a small thing, and then coach to that over and over again. Then when they look at it and they say, you know what, that's really working, that might make them more open to do other things. Now, here's the exception. If they are doing things radically different and in a way that you really do not want them to do, then you're gonna have to go back to that core motivation as to why they're doing that in the first place. You've gotta figure out why are they doing what they are doing? Why do they think that that's the best way to go about it? So I would encourage you to get into the motivation um, behind their activities along those lines. But otherwise, start small. And what other question that came in here this is from Scott, and he's he's got he's asking about timing objections. What do you do when somebody says we'll be ready in six months? Now this is a tough one because we don't want to sail in six months. We want to sail today. So here's the question that you're going to want to ask immediately when somebody says we'll be ready at this point, or we're going to wait until that point. Okay. The question is, what happens in six months? What happens at this time that you're setting out there? Because if we look at it and we say uh, in six months. Um, you know, my last child graduates from high school and moves out, or in six months I have this annuity that matures, or in six months my business structure shifts, whatever that is. Well, those are specific things that are tied to what happened six months from now, and now you're going to have to figure out whether there's a workaround. But it might just be a sort of, we think we'll be ready in six months, and you're trying to flesh out, is there something real that happens in six months, or is there something that's happening in their imagination? But then from there, it's a question of laying out the pros and cons and going on a little bit of a journey with your customer. Why six months versus today? Let's just lay that out both sides. What you want to do is you may be dealing with somebody who firmly thinks that they're going to move in six months. But if you can look at it, you can say, what if we laid out just sort of here are the pros and cons of doing something six months from now versus doing something today? Now, look, that doesn't mean you're going to get the sale, but the first step is to introduce the concept of today to make sure that today is in play. So ask them if you could do that. Go on a little journey with them and look at the pros and cons of moving in six months versus moving today.